Jaden Daniels has decided that he is going to Baton Rouge, my friend. Uh, I'm sure that you are very, very excited about this. He is expected to be a contender to start at LSU. We talked last week about him possibly going to Missouri, and things just fell apart with that for whatever reason. Now he is going to LSU. He is going to be in the quarterback room with Miles Brennan, with Garrett Nussmeyer, and with the new recruit, Walker Howard. Uh, this looks like a pretty good quarterback room just on its face. I would, I would almost guarantee at least one of those guys transfers out before the beginning of this season, uh, just you know, just a guess. But when you have more options, uh, you are more than likely going to come out with a better quarterback room. So I think that this is a, a good thing for LSU for sure and for Brian Kelly in his first season at the helm. Along with that, uh, he's eligible, like his graduate program, he's going to be a grad transfer, not just a regular transfer. Uh, his grad program is going to allow him to enroll and be eligible for spring ball immediately. So he's coming in, guns blazing, ready to rock and roll. Hey, give me your thoughts on this. I know that they are pumped about this down uh, down south. Well, you're 100% wrong about somebody transferring out. Nobody's transferring out. Miles is in. Miles is going to stay. Miles and him are going to compete. Nelson Meyer's not good enough to transfer anywhere. And uh, Walker Howard's dad talked to Brian Kelly this year. Part of him coming to LSU with Brian Kelly was under the understanding that they actually liked the idea of redshirt. Yeah. Um, he he wants he wants to sit for a year, learn the offense. No matter who was the head coach, no matter what offense they were running, um, that that he thinks that that hit, that would benefit his son more than lots of playing time. Uh, so that that's not going to upset the um, the Walker Howard family or Walker Howard. He's not going anywhere. Uh, Miles is going to compete for the job. I do not think Miles is close to winning it. But you, Miles, also needs to understand this. The last two years, LSU has used three different starting quarterbacks due to injury. So the, the chances of Miles actually getting to play football at LSU this year are pretty good if he sits tight. I don't know if there's anywhere that he could transfer and play major college football. I think the only people, that, the only place where he could go and get a guaranteed quote unquote starting job would be if he stepped down a level. And even then, he might have to set down quite a bit of a level to have something guaranteed to him. I like Miles. I think Miles is stable and capable and competent, but he's not great. There is a reason he's been in LSU for five years and had very few snaps and very few starts. This is true. This is true. He he has been hurt, uh, what, the last two seasons, really? And yep. Yeah, yep. that's that's definitely a concern going forward if he were to try and transfer out. Uh, the motivation – Remains to be seen, right? Does he want to stay at LSU and just have a chance to play? Or, uh, I mean, and this is this is all based on whether or not he or Nussmeyer transfers. I did not think that Walker Howard would leave, but... No. Well, Nussmeyer's uh, not going anywhere. Well, where would Nussmeyer go? Like, well, that's that's the thing. Like his, own, his only opportunity to play is to stick around and, and hope that there's a, you know, there's an injury. Because right. he's not going to play well enough to get on the field here. And he's not going to play any well enough to get on the field anywhere else. Like, if Nussmeyer's playing, we're struggling to win football. That's and that's that's the deal, right? It's not a knock on the kid. Just yeah, no, of course not. Of course not. No, I'm, I'm talking about the motivation of if you want to play, if you think you've got a better chance to be a starter somewhere else, uh, it would be at a lower level, like you talked about. And that's the motivation. Yeah. Is, but, it, is the motivation to play? if that was play, the case, he would have transferred or, already because he knew that he wasn't going to be the starter under Miles. Yeah, t- true. So, I, I mean, again, he's seen Miles get hurt you know, two straight years. So, uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, give me your thoughts on how he fits into a Brian Kelly offense. Have we seen? Oh, well, I'm not worried about fit. You know, I don't give a shit about any of that stuff, man. Guys can play. Yes, he Our can. coaches can build offenses around talent. And I love, I'm so disappointed in, like, a lot of the big-time LSU fans that I know and I follow and, I, you know, I see them, you know, the Facebook groups and things like that. It's so disappointing but they don't know who this guy is. You and I have talked about him every year he's been in Arizona State. We have talked about how he is, in my opinion, the last two years, the best player in the Pac-12, okay? I think if, if there is a player of the year, most talented player, I should say, maybe not player of the year, the most talented player in the whole Pac-12, he's been in the last several years. And and he has got a gift of football and, and has been grossly underutilized at Arizona State. 
Um, That's putting and, it mildly. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> and getting to see him with a really, really, really capable head coach and an offensive coordinator that just finished having three, four years of Desmond Ritter, which this guy and Desmond kind of play a little bit alike. I think he's way more athletic than Desmond. Probably not as accurate with the football, but uh, an arm talent, I think, explosiveness uh, with, with the with the arm of talent, I think, is there. I think he's got a lot of talent. Um, I, I think this offense completely changes. I'm going to tell you something, man. The run game, when you have a running quarterback, the run game changes. And True. now now you're going to have to bring somebody in from the secondary to slow down a running quarterback and or the stable of running backs that she's going to bring out of here tonight, this year, to stop him. And that's going to leave gentlemen like Keisha Butte hard to cover. This is going to give defenses fits. Now, is this going to solve all of LSU's ails? No, it will not. I still think we have holes in the defense. We're going to struggle to stop people unless some of these guys who stepped up or get transferred in play substantially above the head of which we've seen them play over the last couple of years in their prior situations. Uh, but, it, no, it makes it super exciting. I think the reason, and now I'm sold on this, I, I 100% believe the reason it took so long for, um, oh, my God, my name just blank. What's his ass to leave Oklahoma to go to USC? Oh, Lincoln Riley. Because, yeah. Li- no, not Lincoln. The shit, the quarterback. Oh, oh Caleb Williams. Oh, uh, Caleb Williams. That's, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I forgot his name. I'm a dumbass, <laughs> by the way. Uh, I think I think now I really believe that the reason it took him so long to commit to USC is because I think Brian Kelly was putting the full court press to try to get him. And Brian Kelly knew he wanted an athletic quarterback to run the offense that they want to run. And, uh, and, and I think he did. As soon as they didn't get him and he ended up at USC, I mean, it wasn't but a week or so later that Jaden Daniels said, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to enter the, the transfer portal. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, I didn't think that was Brian's doing. I 100% think that was all Brian's doing. I think he got a call and, and I don't, I don't think there was anything really going on in Missouri. I, I think I have no idea the, 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 the smoke screen of any of that. I don't know how any of that works. I think he's coming to the SEC. I think he's coming to play big boy football. I think he knows if he can do something special at a big boy school like LSU that throws his draft stock through the roof, and he definitely needs a senior season to throw his draft stock through the roof. You're if right. He was a graduating senior after last year. He, I think he gets drafted, but I think he's a late round draft pick. Oh, most certainly, and if it would be based on show, on potential alone, right? I mean, he he had ten touchdowns total, and ten total, interceptions yeah. last year. So. That's it. It'd be totally body. That's it. We're looking at you and saying you're an athlete, and and maybe somebody will will take a shot on you, and maybe you can turn into Dak Prescott. Maybe you can turn into you know a, a, a cheap version of Cam Newton. You know, maybe we can get something special out of you. But you're a project. You come to LSU. You play every game on national TV, on the big time stage, and 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 you do well. I don't think you have to win the SEC title. I don't think you have to make the playoff. No. I think you just have to play great for, for 12, 13 games, stay healthy, and and just put up some showing, and now you're a first-round, first-day draft pick. I think you are probably right. Uh, you, you lead LSU to a 9-3 and three season after uh, after going 6-7 and seven last year, and yes, yes 100%. Uh, he, he threw... 9-3, and, and you got to be explosive. Oh, you've yes. got to be a star. Like you can't be nine and three, and this defense is just juggernaut the shit out of people. Like that ain't yeah. gonna fly. That's no, it, not it's got to be the other way around. From a, and, like from you, a day three, three draft pick to a to a day one draft pick. Yeah, but, like like you said, yeah. the defense uh, defense has got some holes. Now, obviously, they can fix some of that. They've got you know new defensive coordinator in there, uh, Brad White. Um, and not Brad White. What's the what's the other guy? Mike. Uh, God, the guy that used to be at yeah, Kentucky. The, the linebacker uh, guy from the Chiefs. Yes, yes. Uh, the guy that that implemented his defense with Kentucky, and then Brad White took yeah. it over. So, uh, regardless, uh, uh, Jaden Daniels threw 17 touchdowns and only two interceptions in his freshman season. Last season, his junior year, uh, he threw for twenty yeah, about 2,400 yards, 10 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. It's uh, This is, at this point, going to be a uh, development project, right? I mean, and he's, he's a stud. He's got a bunch of experience, 
but I think he's going somewhere where he knows he will be developed because he hasn't well, been at Arizona State. Staff that he's going to be under offensively is going to be far better than anything he's ever had, and he's either going to learn it. And, and here's the thing: if you're mild, look, don't tuck your head and quit, man. Don't walk away because if he is going to be the ten interception, ten touchdown guy, he's not going to last. Okay, yes. BK will jerk his ass off that field and throw somebody else in. And you got to be ready. You have to be ready. You can't just quit throwing the towel. You got to be ready. But yep. but I don't think there's any way on earth you get him to come in with an athlete like that and you build an offense around him just to just to let him and Miles compete. I, I know that's I probably the things you're going to say from a coaching's perspective. But this guy has potential to be a real star. Here's uh here's Brian Kelly's statement on the matter. Jaden is an outstanding player who will make our quarterback room even stronger. He's a playmaker with a strong arm and the ability to make plays with his feet. We are excited to welcome Jaden to our program as we continue to build a roster of student athletes who will compete for championships on the field and work just as hard in the classroom to earn their degree. So that that was his statement on the matter. Uh, we we know he's coming here that to win is, football games. That is the most coach speak <laughs> you could you could possibly imagine somebody giving, right? Oh, most certainly. Like, like Brian, Brian really does sound like a politician the more he talks. Like hey, he's good at you it. Know, he, he, he tries really hard. <laughs> but so so many people kind of see that as like endearing, like he's putting himself out there and, and whatnot. Like it's it's so interesting, like what some of these coaches say when like, he just used like thirty eight words and to say nothing. Just to, yes, he he could have Bill Belichick and just stared into the camera and was like, "Jaden's now one of our quarterbacks in the quarterback room," and and everything <laughs> he used thirty eight words to say, Bill would have said, "Cool, <laughs> we're we're glad to have him." Bam, yes, done. That's it. Conversation <laughs> over. Like because he didn't say anything else. He just he just flapped his gums. I, I you know, it, it, ah, it's so frustrating. <laughs> people people find Bill frustrating, and I actually find that endearing. It's like ah, yeah. You don't have shit to say. Don't say anything. That's yeah. the best way to handle this. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm um, excited. Uh, being a Tiger fan, I'll tell you this. I was I was not worried about the offense. I was very curious about what this offense was going to look like, seeing all the pieces that we had going into the season as of right now. And I'm really, really glad we were able to pick up one more quarterback. I didn't think it was going to be the caliber of Jane Daniels. But I'm glad to have uh, another piece, and I'm super glad that it's a guy that I think is a star. I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree. I think he's going to be fantastic down there, uh, and we will see. I'm, I'm curious to see how spring ball goes. You know, he's got to establish some chemistry, et cetera, but I'm excited about it. We will see what happens. I, I'm, I'm going I'm to need him and Kayshawn to be BFS for the next three four months. <laughs> You certainly got that right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.